Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, part two of the Saturn V build, 144 scale from Ravel. So, um, at the end of part one, you saw I put some, even some more filler in there, and I painted these nozzles black again. I can't remember if I showed you that or not, but basically I did. I painted them black again, and now I'm just going around and sanding out, and soon pretty much that we're nearly there. There's a bit of a low spot in the bottom of that one. Um, but uh, yeah, they, I mean, they don't need to be absolutely perfect, but we just want to, what I'm trying to do is just get them a lot better than they were from the kit. So what I'm going to do now, as I've done on this one, is brush some Mr. Surfacer 1000 in there. This stuff I've, I've shown you before, I use it on all my models, I, I think it's the, the, the best, one of the best modelling products you can have. Um, so just brush that in there, and then we can let that go off, and then I'll um, just go around again and, and, and sand it, and that should be it then that should be enough so just get a nice decent amount on the brush and I'm just gonna brush it out like so and um, we're not really worried about the finish or anything we just want to make sure we get a nice even coat um, and you want to apply it fairly thick you know you sort of breaking all the rules of brush painting really with this you're, you're putting way too much on if you like um, and I'm also putting it around the bottom where that uh, where that step is and just to sort of try and blend that in a bit I'm not really too worried about how it looks right down in the bottom um, I'm more concerned about just partly it's it's um, trying to show people watching this video how to go about simp you know correcting correcting things because you know this won't just apply to this uh this model this will apply to i don't know let me think you'll probably have a you, you'll probably build a, a jet aircraft one day and the engine nozzle is in two halves and you'll think i remember and i just did a thing about that with plastic card and some filler and stuff so i think i'll do the same on that one you know or um you know a helicopter where you've got you might be building a huey and you've got the exhaust coming out each side um you know you might want to uh use your plastic card the same as i have here to um to make them look like one inside because quite often manufacturers get the outsides lovely and the insides can be a mess some manufacturers are learning and they're, they're getting the insides as good as the outsides now but some still insist on putting a, a million ejector ejector pin marks in the nozzles so you can see what I'm doing here, just brushing this on and you don't need to watch me do all this so um, I'll come back when I'm ready to start rubbing it all down. Just to quickly um, come in with this little bit of information, if you remember we put this piece of 5000 plastic card around the end of the um, command support module. Um, <clears throat> I then trimmed it back and I've gone over it with some Mr. Surfacer. I'm just going to sand it back and I'm thinking it's, it's got like a cone shape to it because the base of the command module goes on. So I'm thinking what better way to sand that than to use that to sand it. So I've got a piece of um, 1200 here. I've cut a hole in it. I've cut two holes either side 8mm apart for these pegs to go in and then I can just stick those pegs through there. Stick it onto here like so. What was missed the hole? we're missing the hole and then um just basically i'm just going to use the the base of the command module to rub this down to the shape so the command module base will sit in there nicely and those two pegs are actually quite handy because they drive the uh the uh, the wet and dry paper and there we go that's nice and sandy smooth i can see i need a bit more in there I've got a bit of a, a step in there so I'll get that nice and cleaned up um, but you can see now that that's going to fit in there really nicely it's actually the hole in the or the peg is slightly tapered I think um, yeah if I give it a twist it'll probably go down better but that's going to fit in there lovely so um little tip for you there guys <laughs> right that paints all on now the uh, Mr. Surfacer is in all the nozzles and on the end of the um, command support module so I'm now in that wonderful place where we all love to be as modelers called 
waiting for paint to dry and as this is quite a thick coat of paint on here this is going to be have to be left for at least 24 hours before I start going in there with them uh, with the wet and dry and this time I'll be using it wet so um then we can make a start on the outsides of them then but uh, they're, they, they're pretty good they're pretty well aligned um, it took a bit of work as you know if you watch the video you'll see and uh, yeah quite pleased with how they're coming out so they can sit to one side and wait for paint to dry which is a great place to be um, I'll keep this piece of emery as well that I made specially as well a piece of wet and dry should I say so what can we do now well I, I could either put this all away and start something else do another review for you or start looking at um, how we can move forward and basically we're going to start from the bottom and work up aren't we so what I need is to get these parts off here uh, and have a look at this assembly um, and consider perhaps putting the floor into here now here's basically all the parts we need for that step there putting those fins on so we've got those here the only parts we're going to have left over are these two um, I don't know if they're rocket boosters or shrouds so I'm going to cut those off of that sprue and then they can go back in the box so they don't get lost um, what I'm going to do is nip this one off because it's about to break off and if you are a beginner try and avoid having parts break off the sprues because quite often it'll rip a chunk of the part out with it so I'm just going to nip that one off there Nip that one off there. I must say that's very nice the way they've done that. It's very old uh, for you know for such an old kit. They haven't they haven't impinged on the um, the detail too much on there. And then all we've got left is these four fins. Then so I'm just going to not lob that bit of sprue off. Notice I don't use my Tamiya cutters for cutting sprue. So uh, just put that sprue out of the way that can go in the bin um, I actually put my sprues in my recycling bin and they don't take it so we've got to take off these little um, ejector pins here these are little ejector pin uh, little ejector pin parts that's what pushes them out of the mold tool so uh, nice that isn't it even back in those days Ravel didn't put ejector pin marks on the surfaces of the fins and yet in this day and age we find some kit manufacturers they still do it put the jet pin mark right in the middle of that surface so uh, thank you Ravel thank you for that obviously a good engineer working on this project so um so basically that's those parts off the sprue there now we need to dig out the the actual mounting for the rocket engines and or motors you call them isn't it and um and that piece there so that's going to be silver plastic, I think, which is in the bottom of the box here. So here we've got those parts and there's the base there. So we'll have that one off. And also we want this part here, number nine, which is the top of the liquid hydrogen tank, liquid oxygen tank. I can't, I can't remember but the numbers yeah the part numbers on the part itself so which is the old way of doing things um, so that's those so now we've got all the parts off for steps two three and four so let's have a look at these parts let's get my uh, coarse sanding stick and just remove that nib from there and what I'm going to do is see if I can actually Put all this together before painting because I'm going to be doing a lot of work on correcting the seams and I don't think I can slot this down in after so which way are we going so yeah straight away I can see an issue here yeah we don't have enough support in there and also we've got this issue here that I was telling you all about you can see there that um it comes round and up it raises up as it comes around and I'm going to cure that so it stays um, it stays with the uh, with the curvature of the the smooth parts if you like so this is going in this end and it's going to sit on top of that groove so I don't think I'll be able to get that in once this is oh I don't know maybe it will
okay so I could maybe just slide it in from that end it's getting caught on those lugs so that's not a plan um, so if I clamp it together on this end I can probably put it in like that keep it this way up so it falls forward no, it's not playing ball I think we can get that in there afterwards. So I think I can put all this together and then put that in after. That's what I'm going to do. Um, there's no specific alignment or anything because there's nothing to uh, specifically mark it. So that's great. So I can put that in after. So what we need to do now is look at getting this tube together. Um, I'm going to do this now because I want it to, uh, to triangle the cement to go off for at least 24 hours before I start working on it. Now I'm looking here, we've got some quite big sprue nibs so I could just come along and cut them off. So that's all fine. Um, now I'm going to concentrate on how we're going to get this to go together. Now these surfaces aren't particularly flat. You can see we've got ejector pin marks all along them. If the light's going to pick that up. It's quite a big one there. Um, if I can get the camera to focus. Come on camera focus. There's one there. No, this white plastic is a nightmare for the for the video. But there's yeah, and that's stopping them going together nicely. So I'm gonna take my sanding stick and I'm just gonna lightly in fact what I can do to show you if I just get a pencil to go across here. Now you can see the uh, ejection pin mark because the lead of the pencil is picking up on the edge of it. There's another one there. Now you can see them. Okay, so you can see them they're now clear as day. So if I just take my uh, sanding stick and rub over that area, we can get rid of these ejector pin marks which are not going to help us at all now we've got pins on this side holes on this side so we'll have the opposite on the on the other half so just sanding gently you can see that ejector pin there is raised because I've still got pencil showing around it so I'll just keep rubbing like that until the all the pencil disappears There we go. And I've got to do the same on the other side. That one's shrunken down. That one's sunken down. That one's raised. Yeah, they're a problem. So what I might have to do here is remove the pins, but um you don't want to watch me sanding them. What I'm concerned about is how this goes together. Okay, like so. And we can have all this mismatch quite easily here. You can see there where I squeeze it. So what I want to do is help the model out by giving it some sort of alignment. Now the first thing we need to do is look inside and check that everything is sort of fairly flush i.e. the plastic is the same thickness. If one side's thicker than the other, what I'm about to do won't work. So let me get this sanding done and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do. Right then guys, if you're a beginner, <clears throat> you'll probably want to re rewind this a couple of times and uh, take it all in. If you're an experienced modeler, you know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, so basically what this is all about now is marking this up. You can see I've put some masking tape on here and I've made a small error in that I don't want the masking tape to actually go over the edge. I need it to be just short of the edge so that it doesn't affect what we're going to do. So make sure you're masking tape. And if you notice, I'm not using Tamiya tape, I'm using cheap stuff because it's cheap. Um, there is no point in using expensive tape to do this. So there we go, that's just short of the edge there. Yeah, I've done the same on this side 
and that one's okay this one's this one's off I need it short of the edge there and there there we go job done right so what I'm going to do now the first thing I do is look inside here what I'm going to do is add stiffeners to make the tube line up better and make it a bit more rigid if you pick the model up like this going forward it may well crack if you don't do something like this to strengthen up the joint and also if you look at some other people's builds they really have struggled to get a decent um, seam here so this is the the first step in in how to get a good seam for you if you're a beginner um, if you're building something like a, 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 a large airline like a 747 um, you probably have the same problem with that so along the top edge of the fuselage this is what you do so I've got both sides here both sides have got the, the tape on now you can see that inside we've got some some little lugs here that they basically help it stay in the mold I think um, when, when the mold opens it holds it in, in onto this half and that half comes away um, so basically we want to mark the tape where we've got anything on the inside that's going to get in the way so I'm just going to mark it there and there yeah so what I want to do is avoid putting anything there because Actually, I need to avoid that whole area because it's going to be seen. So this area here above that line, we're not going to put anything. Okay. So I don't forget, I'll do the same on this side. So that area there. I've gone down far enough, haven't I? Yeah. So that area there is going to have nothing. Okay. Then we can't have anything there, so we may as well have that extended to there. I've already done that one. I've already done that one. And we've also got another one of those lugs there and there we're going to have that area unavailable and then the same on this side oops broke the lead and then there and there see that pin's broken off there and there and there to there so basically we've only got these areas in between these crosses to actually do anything with. So what I'm going to do now is put these two together like so. Okay, and then transfer those lines onto this half like that. Okay, and then we can make sure that basically we've got the same on both sides and we're not going to get an issue with with those plastic lugs being in the way. So there we go. So what I want to do now is mark this mark this area in here with sort of 10 millimeter wide bands or thereabouts or 15 millimeter wide bands or whatever. So you can see there I've got like just over 40 mil so if I go I don't know there that's 12 24 and uh, I don't know 12 25 and that's it so you've got those three areas there so ignore that line there and then we've got the same about the same here so I'm gonna go um, about 15 and about 30 there so those two lines there and then I'll go about 15 and about ooh, about 25 there okay I'm not gonna put anything on that yes I will actually I will put one on that end we'll check to see that it doesn't foul with anything I think that end goes on there doesn't it so as long as we make sure we stay within that area and they don't put anything there it'll be okay okay so I'll do the same now on this side so we've got like 35 there so if I go sort of 12 and 28 then we got 40 there so if I go 15 and 
30, 15 and 30. And then what we're going to do is transfer those lines onto this half. Turn it over, transfer these across. Right, so what I want to do now is mark an X on every other one on this side. Okay. And then everyone that hasn't got an X on this side, put an X. Okay, so basically anything with an X, you mustn't put a piece of plastic in. So where this one is, I'll glue the plastic to this side, I'll glue the plastic to this side, here, here, here. Yeah. So you'll see what I'm doing in a minute when, when we get there. Okay, so I'll, I'll just um, do the same on this side. All right, so an X there, and then I'm going to put an X there. I'll put an X there and there. Okay, so that's going to be an X there, an X there, X there, X there, 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 and that's it. So when we take those apart, what I'm going to do now is put 10 millimeter wide strips of what of 10 a 10 millimeter square of one millimeter thick plastic card in every X every every section where there isn't an X. Alright? And then I'll do the same on this side, and what we'll end up with is a interleaving pattern that will give us a lot of rigidity at the side of the uh, tube. So um, let me get that done and I'll get the plastic well, I'll show you now, I'll cut the plastic card out. So I'll come along with my uh, with my scalpel and take my piece of one mil plastic card and make a mark there so that's 10 millimeters do the same here that's 10 millimeters and now what I can do is get my rule go in there like so and then did I just jump then no and then I can just come down Two or three scores in it and then just snap it off and now what I can do is use my board um, these don't need to be perfect squares as you can imagine they're just basically pieces of scrap um, you could use old credit card um, I think you'll find I've never tried it I must try it pot noodle pots I think are polystyrene so you could use those as well uh, in fact, they'd be really good for this because they've already got a curve in them. And what's the bet in here? I'll have enough. I'll be one short, so I have to cut another strip just to get one 10 millimeter square. There we go. And then we can just break all these off like so. And that will do us. For that bit there okay and now what i'm going to do is get my tamiya extra thin and as i say remember i'm going to put the parts wherever there isn't an x so i'm going to glue that one in there like that yeah so what i can do here this is why i didn't want the uh the tape hanging off the edge so i don't want to touch the tape with the glue because the, the glue will capillary under the tape so there's that one there And then I'm going to put another one here. If you notice, I've only got them sticking out, I don't know, about one and a half, two millimetres. That one hasn't glued properly. There we go. There we go again. Just put one and a half, two millimetres in there. Drop a glue. And then what we could do afterwards is go around behind them and just put some glue on if you want to, just to make sure that because they need to be pretty strong 
you just put some of your extra thin in there and let it capillary under like so give it a squeeze job done okay so I'll go on and do the rest rather than have you sit there watching me uh, glue a million pieces of square plastic to my model all right so I've done one side so you can see the sort of thing we're talking about here wherever there's a gap I've put a, a plastic peg I also cut them in half so they didn't go as deep down it suddenly dawned on me if I use them at sort of 10 millimeter square they'll be sitting at an angle like that and they'll stop them going together it'll kind of be a bit tough to get together anyway but uh, I'm gonna have to let them go off nice and hard um, and look at that I've glued one to the top of the tape there that's clever expecting polystyrene cement to work on uh, masking tape doesn't quite work that way does it no numpty so um, let's just get that out of there and put it back on so plastic to plastic joint there we go and you've got some tiny ones to go in the little gaps in there and everything and I've put a tiny little one there and so basically now you can see that what will happen it'll all go together and those will interlock if you look down inside you can see they'll, they'll all interlock and it will give it a, a much more rigid structure so we're going to get the other side done now and now they're uh, they're both done so we can take the tape off like so and then we can um, go on the inside and glue these in nice and solid I'm going to use my plastic weld glue because it works so well with the um, with the styrene the uh, the styrene sheet it's um works very well it's actually better than Tamiya extra thin in my opinion that's the um, EMA plastic weld it's called I showed you that glue in another couple of videos I've done it's, uh, yeah it's very good stuff and it's also they say it's good for ABS um, I, I beg to differ I don't think it's that good on ABS I think the um, the Tamiya extra thin quick setting is better but Tamiya actually do an ABS specific glue so I'm not sure exactly how that works I must get myself some and try it because so I've got a couple of um well I've got a few ABS RC kits and also I've got that 35th scale Dora railway gun that, um, I will probably pick up again one day but as I said with that kit that is such a massive massive project um, doing stuff like this conversions and stuff and getting parts together and everything is fun but when you've got stuff like that and every single piece you pick up needs to be basically rebuilt um, it's it's a bit soul destroying you know so they're on there now so let's just see if I can get it together without breaking anything I should be able to get one side to go together And it should all be nicely interlocked and extremely strong yeah I'm not going to chance it um, it needs a bit of a, a nudge to get them in so um, oh, that side's gone together and you can see there when you look down inside let me just make sure you can see down inside there you can see how they're interlocking basically that is giving you a much stronger much more level um, joint to work with so it's you know it's easier from the start Let's just try and get it all to interlock yeah it's just pushing those pegs back so what I'm gonna have to do is let these go off hard and then what I'll do just with a, a sanding stick or a knife I'll just put a little lead on the front edge just so they just to make them go in um, just to make it a little bit easier for them to pass in and that'll, um, all I'm going to do is something like this I'll just take the knife and just cut a a little slither like so and that will help them to um, engage as long as I don't touch the, uh, the bottom edge adjacent to the the wall of the cylinder all this will do is guide them in 
rather than have them rather than have them just pushing each other in okay so I'm gonna let them go off and um, see you in a minute okay so it's been about I don't know 15 20 minutes so that glue has uh, gone off now and um, basically now we can put the two halves together and if I just show you you hear that they clip in now and then this side will probably clip in as well there we go so that's all clipped in now and now those seams are a lot stronger than they were and they're also being held level I've also noticed what's probably given a lot of people problems with this seam if you're just sanding it expecting it to come out I've just noticed if you look here I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, it, it, this white plastic is a bloody nightmare. Um, if I can catch it in the light, you can see there's a lot of skag marks in it where it's come out of the mould tool. Uh, there's a couple of marks there from my sanding stick. But these here, these are all just, if I can catch those in the light, they're, they're sort of scrape marks from where it's come out of the mould tool and they've kind of undercut. So if you like, that section there is kind of almost like that. Um, so that actually needs raising up and then blending around so um, it's going to take quite a bit of work but it'll be worth it in the end because it'll look lovely and um, yeah I'm a bit concerned now I've got a, it's together here and I've got a gap there so what's going on there see it's always worth looking there's a shard of plastic or something in there it's always worth double checking your work and just making sure if we start throwing glue at anything just making sure that everything's okay you see now that's going together fine now well, let's get this side to go together there's that for a clipping into place and there we go well, the seams all fit it all goes down lovely now so what I need to do is glue this together now if I had, like I say, the Revell contactor or something, I could put a, a bit down each side and then just push it together and hold it. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to use liquid glue because that's what I like to do. Um, in fact, I may... No, I'm just thinking I may use some tube glue on it, but I won't. Um, what I'm going to do is work along from one end and go along and then just get one side sorted and then sort the other side out later and we also need to make sure you can see here you get this kind of mismatch there I want to make sure I don't get that okay so what I could do there actually no I'll just leave it like that I was going to say I could put another little piece in there behind on the other side to stop it uh, stop it doing that but um and I just want to check before I go any further I've got those lugs too low down and that they're going to stop it going together no they're not that's absolutely fine so time me extra thin to the ready and we're going to need a lot of it so I'm going to start by gluing on the inside here and just concentrate on getting that together and making sure that it's actually flush and they line up don't want to get any uh, mismatch on there okay so that's like that that's in and then I'm gonna put some more in there and you can just literally flood it but just make sure you keep your hands away from the joint on the outside because you put your thumb over there now the glue will get pulled up under your thumb and then I can put some on from the outside and that will run into the joint you can see it being pulled in and when you give it a squeeze you'll probably see something oozing out this area here is all going to be gone anyway because it's going to be sanded down so I'm not too worried about what I do to that if we pinch the center it does this with large aircraft as well if you pinch the center it opens the joint up and it allows it did the capillary action can work a lot easier with it like that and yes I am literally flooding it we'll push that together you can see the glue all oozing out 
I can do the same again here, pull it apart, let the glue all go down into that joint. Again, it's oozing out. Same here. I can get that one from the inside in a second. And put plenty of glue in there. And there we go. Now that is properly, properly welded together. As I say, you're better off having a bit too much glue than not enough because with this white plastic you can't see when you've got a dry joint. And basically what I mean by that is if you're building a, a trumpeter kit or something or a Tamiya kit with grey plastic, if when you sand it down you see a white line appear, that generally means you've got a dry joint. So when, when you've got that you just go over it again with some extra thin like this just let it go into the joint and then I'm going to get some more in there if I can and of course the other beauty of putting that the end of that tank in afterwards means we can um, means we can clean up the inside of the seam as well the other thing I'm going to do now is with this will look at you I'm going to use an ordinary paintbrush um, what shall I use this one here and I'm going to put it in the extra thin, which joint is that side. And I'm just going to make sure we've got plenty of glue down in around these, these tabs that I've put in so that they work on both sides and not just the one side that they've already been glued on. And as I say, guys, that bit I showed you at the beginning with marking the X's and the tape and everything, if you didn't grasp that straight away, just rewind it and watch again. And you'll soon get it. Basically what I'm doing is marking an X where I don't want to put a tab. And I'm sure you understand that you need to have the tabs on alternate sides. So you get this interlocking. If you put the roll in one side it wouldn't do anything. Well it would. It would be better than having nothing. But it wouldn't be as good as having them on both sides. So you can see that side's not glued at all. And that side can go off now not go off you know leave leave the country or anything but um set is what i mean yeah i don't really want it to go off because i haven't finished it yet there we go so while i'm doing this this is part two i've edited part one and i've got it all ready to go but i don't know when i'm going to put it out yet so today is monday the 29th of April. Um, See, so yeah, I don't know when I'm going to. Um, I don't know when I'm going to put this video out. So there we go. That's that side done. So now I could put some tape on there if I want to. I'm just going to put a piece in the middle because it was trying to pull apart in the middle and there we go now because that glues in there and it's sort of all sticky and gunged up with all the plastic and everything it won't run under the tape but if you do it straight away or if you do it um, if you put the tape on and then glue it what you'll find is you'll get the uh, the glue coming out running under the tape and destroying your surface which you don't want And here you can see this, um, this is what I'm talking about, what I talked about in my review. We've got this, this raised area here where they, they, where they can't mould the grooves. They've got this, this shape instead of it being circular. And that's what we're going to get rid of, guys. And I'm thinking about how I'm going to do it. And it might not be too difficult, actually, looking at it like this. We'll see. If it doesn't work, it was only £23 I've wasted. <laughs> So there we go and also you can see that we can get a bit of a 
the misalignment that way as well so let that one side go uh, start to set off and then we can do this other side right so I've got the um, the halves all glued together now both sides and um, rubber band on there as you can see that side it wants to um, it wants to sort of do this if you like like one side is wider than the other so um, I've got a rubber band on it to keep them in check I don't want to put any lugs in there to support it because that's going to be seen if I decide to have it coming apart a ball if that's the right words then uh, I don't really want to um, I don't want to be able to see lugs in there so I thought well, I'll, I'll put this um, this tank end in there which I can't pick up I I'll put this tank end in there to support it but the trouble is it's quite a loose fit so that doesn't support it and hold it round so I've taken this part off the uh, screw which is part 19 um, and that literally bayonets on there and that's the intermediate stage that comes off um, when when stage one falls away that stays on stage two and then that falls away after so if somebody knows why it does that they can tell me I'd be uh, ever so grateful to know I'd love to know why it doesn't come away with stage one um, I think it may have been something to do with clearance because it's very the, the exhaust nozzles in there are quite tight so yeah what I've done is put that on there just to hold it sort of round as, as, as well as I can so that's basically how it's going to sit I don't know what it looks like when I stand it up for you I don't think it probably looks very good at all um, where's that lug there it is it's all sort of lug so it only goes on one way which is cool um, so there, there you go that's a really good shot for you isn't it but you can see down in there where I've put those uh, those lugs in now it's holding it all nice and um, nice and smooth so I'm going to leave that now for I don't know probably 24 hours it's got a lot of glue in there before I do anything with those seams at all so um, I won't call that a day for this section because it hasn't been long enough but what I'll do is I'll probably um, finish off this uh, all the work on this one before we get it painted and also get the get these nozzles finished in this section and um, and then that's that um, I, I need to go on and put the uh, put the actual I don't know the, the, the base the floor I'm not sure what it's called uh, I need to go on and get that in but I don't want to be I want to have this stood on that base really I want it to be um, all sort of sat there and as it's going to be when it's finished so I don't want to uh, I don't want to um, you know um, be messing around with it or anything I want the glue to set so I'm trying to talk and think and do everything at the same time and I'm, I'm just not that clever so uh, there we go guys I'll see you in a little while it'll be a few seconds for you but it'll be quite a long time for me because I'm waiting for the paint to dry and now I'm waiting for glue to dry Right guys, hello, um, this is uh, day two of the build and as you know we've just, um, well to you we've just, to me it was a few hours ago, just built um, stage one and that's the glue's going off now, I've got the tape off and uh, pretty soon we'll start working on this seam. Got some building up to do here because it's, uh, it's, it's low there, um, that just needs sanding. And then I think this side just needs sanding here, but you can see, I don't know if the light will pick it up, as I said before, the this area here is all distorted and scuffed and everything, so, but it's only to be expected, I mean, for the, the mold tool's 50 odd years old, for God's sake, it's, uh, it's going to play up, you know, it's going to be worn. Um, so, that can stay over there for a while, what I want to concentrate now is getting these um, these engines finished on the insides. And then we can uh, start looking at the outsides afterwards. Um, but what I intend to do is there's going to be a lot of, um, with, with this and the other stages, there's going to be a lot of filling and sanding and stuff. So there's going to be a lot of waiting for filler to dry and that. So while I'm doing that, I can be working on these um, in, in between times. So the first thing to look at is the um, command service module here. Remember I got that front edge there cleaned up. There's some plastic card in there. Uh, and if you remember I've got the, um, the, the, the bottom plate off of the um, command module and I've got this piece of 1200 here. I'm just going to get some water on it actually to uh, give it a bit of a clean and um, 
in case you don't know guys if you use water with wet and dry it cuts better you get more uh, more of an effect with it so I'm not going to flood it because I don't want to get everything soaking wet but I'm just going to use that to basically sand that Mr. Surfacer on the end into shape now why am I doing that basically because this unit is going to sit on there it actually clips in um, and uh, and that's that so I want was my sticks just falling out I want the um, I want the fit to be as good as I can get it so if I just sand it like that then when I put this in it'll fit in there I mean I need to do something about that peg because it's it's sort of pushing its way out of the hole but it'll sit in there and uh, yeah the fit will be lovely so um I just need to open up that hole slightly so it's not quite so tight that's I need to be careful I don't make it too loose that it falls apart because I'm, I'm probably gonna have this coming off and like I say when I've got unsuspected uh, or um, uneducated in this visitors I can say remember when you saw the the, the the bit come back on the parachutes well out of the whole model that's the bit you get left and uh, they'll all go oh bloody hell so um yeah here we are so that's that done so I can stay over there for a while and now what I need to do is get these rubbed down well this Mr. Surface inner is nice and dry now and if you remember I said I'm going to use this wet now because you can see it's all clogged up so this piece here is probably the most worn and creased up and everything so we'll just get it wet and you can see that the, the, the water has the effect of cleaning it um, but also when it's wet it cuts better as I say so I'll go in here now and just sand this just to blend it all out and hopefully now we won't have any high and low spots basically you can see that what it's doing is just blending everything in I'll come out to the edge and I'm going in a circular motion because I almost kind of want to get some grooves in it to give it some uh, some some interest you know rather than just be a, a flat featureless cone like I say that walk around I saw the inside of the cone had um had a kind of um turned effect on it if you like so there we go so that is that I'll get a piece of paper towel well I'll prepare it as ever night and just go inside there and clean that out and we can see well you can't see but I can but basically what I've done there is just with the wet and dry blended it out and the mister surfacer has stayed in all the little low areas the high areas have been knocked back so if I wanted to give that a prime now that'll look bloody lovely so um I need to carry on and get the rest done okay so once again they're sanded down and you can see they're all um all nice and smooth uh, we've got the high and the low spots you can see in there so I can feel there's some irregularity in that one down in the bottom but it's it's kind of smooth so I'm not going to worry about it too much and it is right down in the bottom what I'm more worried about is sort of everything between the end and here if, as long as that's nice that's all fine um, and I'm also interested I don't want any steps or anything it's uh, big steps in that area so I'm quite happy with that so what I'm going to do is give them a coat of black paint or I might just put some more Mr. Surfacer in a couple on, in that area down the bottom I mean we've come this far I may as well uh, get it right haven't I so that's what I'll do I'll do that I'll put some Mr. Surfacer in there and let that go off and then I'll uh, be back with the command service module as you know I've sanded this top edge to get a perfect fit what was concerning me was whenever I pushed the um, the command module in it was just springing back out again and what I've noticed is this pin here is um, is tapered so um, I opened up that hole slightly to get an easier fit and I also noticed that boss was slightly too high so I've actually gone down over that boss with like a five millimeter drill and just put a sort of a chamfer on it so that it kind of matches the base of that 
and then I noticed when I was pushing it in it was still springing back up and the problem is is the air so I was going to drill through and I thought no what I'll do is I'll leave it like that and if I need to what I can do is add a bit of weight into here to make it stay in there or I can get an earth magnet and put a screw in there and, or a screw in there and put a magnet in there and then it will um, it'll stay on so uh, I think that's what I'm going to do um, go the magnet and screw route and uh, and we'll go from there but you can see from that the fit now is is perfect um, much much better than the kit why I'm fussing too much I don't really know because this is all wrong anyway apparently but like I said at the beginning I'm not spending money on this on aftermarket to correct it um, the 196 scale different story but this is actually a block one command service module a service module apparently um, which is what was on Apollo 1 and we all know what happened to Apollo 1 um, which was dreadful um, so apparently this was this this uh, this service module was never used on any manned flight again the after any manned flight used the uh, the block 2 version which looks different to this so if you're building the 196 scale if you go into the aftermarket and look at companies like real space they do a um a resin upgrade and basically it's it's a corrected command service module and of course the beauty of that is as well if you have got the 196 kit and you want to make it correct and you're not going to have the lunar module exposed the actual 196 kit um if you're aware Ravel do a 196 sort of diorama with the lunar module and the command service module that complete kit is in the 196 kit so if you do get the resin upgrade for your 196 kit you'll have and you don't want to display the um, lunar module you'll have a complete other kit there to build for free if you like so um again i need to get this painted up black and see how that looks with those scribe lines and everything i'm happy with the seam um the, the, there's no sink shrinkage in that at the moment that i can see but i'm going to get this painted black anyway and then as i said at the beginning leave that for a few days and see if we do get any sinkage in it um because i don't want to find any shink sinkage once it's got the uh the metallic coat on it and as i say i'm i'm gonna i think i'm gonna just gonna put a little bit of surfacer in a couple of these just to get rid of these ridges i've come this far i may as well get them uh, as near to spot on as i can right so i've given them another coat of mr surfacer now you must think i'm crazy i just keep on adding and adding and adding but um i just want to get them right that's all and uh I mean already I think you'll agree they just look so much better I'll be doing the same on the 196 kit so you get to see it all again on there if you're uh, if you're mad so um, <clears throat> let's have a look at this uh, this stage one assembly now as I say this side is all okay let's take that off this side is undercut and everything so I think the first thing I'm going to do here is um put something on there to get in and fill the joint now one of the beauties of you if you remember i put sprue glue around here first if you didn't see that go back have a look um sprue glue is a wonderful thing it's basically styrene sheet mixed in it gets stringy as well mixed in a, an old tamiya extra thin bottle and you just mix it up so you've got a consistency like which is you know just short of stringing or just stringing um and the beauty of it is, um, I've got the strings everywhere now. If you notice before, I, I should have shown you before. If, go back a few seconds. Have a look. Just go back. Just thirty seconds. Um, you'll see that where I've rubbed this down and feathered it out, the plastic card sort of blends out. And the reason I'm able to do that is because the sprue goo is plastic card. So when you paint the sprue goo onto an edge and then you sand it and feather it away, you're actually feathering away the plastic card into the sprue goo which is plastic card and then feathering that into the plastic which is the same as sprue goo so this is kind of fused the plastic and the plastic card together if you like if i'd used filler in that area and then feathered it out i'd probably get a line or a crack because the filler doesn't actually it, it does the the chemical fillers like i've used here you, you get the viejo fillers uh, and they don't I'll just get one out and show you um, these things here these plastic fillers uh, like plastic fantastic and that they don't actually 
stretchy into the plastic at all they're just sitting on the surface like polyfiller so if you actually sand an edge up to it it, it, it will crack eventually because it's not actually bonded in at all so um I shouldn't have touched that there so basically um, what I'm going to do here is on this area I'm going to put some sprue goo and on this area here because it's I can see it I know you can't because it's white plastic if it was any other color you'd see it but I'm just going to paint some of this onto this area um, and I think that's going to be one of the biggest painful parts of this kit is the fact that I'm going to be spending a lot of time waiting for stuff to dry but that's what it's all about with all these seams and everything that's what um, that's what modeling is all about really it's it's the patience so what you could do is is have this kit and another kit on the go um, you know if you're into your space stuff perhaps have this and a space shuttle on the go because that one will also require you know waiting around waiting for glue and seams and, and filler and everything to dry those marks there they're nothing they're just me knocking off the um, knocking off that sprue nib there and don't worry too much about this stringing that gets on it it doesn't affect it it's not there it dries pretty much instantly so it's not um, it's not there long enough to cause any damage I'm just going into that edge there and it's best to go a bit over the top with this than than not because um, I mean you can put on very very thin layers it will, obviously it will dry quicker but the problem is it does shrink back so you will probably find you'll be putting two or three you know applications on but like I've said earlier I'm not I'm not too concerned about using st stuff over the top of this but as an initial sort of filler I like to use sprue glue because as I just said it it is the plastic and it's gonna get in there and grab and fill and just it, it's gonna become part of it rather than be sat on top of it is what I'm saying so I'm gonna wait that for that to dry so here we are again we're waiting for sprue glue to dry we're waiting for paint to dry um, I could go on and spray this command service module but I may as well get these done I want to get a coat of black paint in them just to check they look good one other thing I forgot to tell you in the bottom of these I've got a um, a cutter which is here and this is a five and a half millimeter cutter and I've just gone in the bottom and drilled them out with this just to get them round again okay because in the bottom they're kind of that shape so just go out five and a half mil you could use a five and a half mil drill it just makes them round again makes it look a little bit better in the bottom so um probably fussing over nothing there but that's me all over so I think what we'll do I think so I can get this video out there I think we'll call this that a day for part two so um it's been quite involved and it's worth looking back through I've just noticed I need to put some sprue glue in there there's a seam there um, in fact I'll show you what I do there right so I need to put some sprue glue in there you can see there's a small gap I think the others are all okay yeah they're all fine but there is a tiny gap in that one which I don't like now as you can see I've got this detail on here which in this area it's going to be got rid of anyway because if you remember I'm going to get rid of that horrible step but I don't want to destroy it because I'm going to use it as my reference for, for what comes next now because I've put sprue glue on the outside here already I need to be a little bit careful so I've measured this and it's just under 50 millimeters long so what I'm going to do and I am using Tamiya tape for this I'm going to put the tape where's my tweezers I'm going to put the tape so it's just next to the join that I want to fill let's push that end down lift this end up and then rub it down the bits of dirt on there are from where I've been sanding and then I'm going to do the same on this side and just put the tape down again this is for for our newer modelers out there for the beginners 
And this is great if you're doing an aircraft fuselage with loads of rivet detail and panel lines and stuff, and you want to protect all that, you know, do this before you fill, use Mr. Surfacer, sprue goo, whatever. And now what I can do is put some sprue goo on there. Just brush it in. Okay. And just leave that to go. Give that a couple of minutes and then we'll peel the tape off. But uh, no, nope, I've got a gap there. See the sprue goo? I don't know if you can see that there. The sprue goo is sunken in. So that's always worth looking for as well. So put some more on. And again, this is the bit using sprue goo that's sunk in there. I've put some more on, but this is actually glue going in here now. So that's going to form a welded joint rather than just having filler in there. And that is the beauty of this, uh, of this stuff. Now, you don't have to use sheet styrene. Um, if you're a, a member of Phil Flory's site, he did an article on this. Some people argue quite aggressively against it. I don't argue aggressively. I just say my opinion is I use styrene sheet wherever possible. OK, so here I've used styrene sheet. Now, if I didn't have any styrene sheet, I would have used the Airfix plastic sprue. OK, um, I mean, here I've got HK sprue because HK plastic is very hard here. I've got I think this is this is trumpeter trumpeter and um, what's their names um, hobby boss. Um, that's that's their sprue in there. So if I'm doing one of their kits, I'll use that. And then here I've got some black stuff, which is the black that the um, the big uh, Dora gun is made of because that's ABS. So, yeah, there's there's different ones for different horses for courses, as they say in England. But this one is the good all rounder, the uh, the white styrene sheet. The, the problem with using some sprues, um, particularly which ones have I struggled with? I can't think now. Certain kits. Um, you mix up the sprue goo, great, you put it on and it just shrinks back to nothing. Um, it's like you never put anything on there. So that's one of the issues with using uh, any, you know, any old sprue. And of course, the other problem is if I were to use this on here, oops, when it sets, it's going to be much harder than the surrounding plastic. So when I sand it, I'll end up with this kind of shape because I'm, I'm sanding. It's harder here than it is here and here. So when you sand it, you end up with that. So you need the, the whatever it is you're sanding to be the, roughly the same hardness as what's around it. So that's been on there a few minutes now and it's not sinking anymore. And I want to pull the tape off before it settles. Um, before it dries, because as you can see there, it started to peel away on the edge. Don't push that down. Just leave it. That edge it will uh, it'll just sit there and rub off after. If you do this, if you leave this to the end, what you'll find is the sprue goo will dry over the tape and all you'll end up with is tape stuck to your model. So there we go. I'm going to leave that alone now. Don't touch it. And that will uh, settle. So there we go, guys. I'm going to call that a day. I want to get this video out, as I say. Um, it's been quite a busy one, this. Um, look back again and you'll, if you were confused by what I was doing. But this here, doing this in here is... For me, it's a must. Um, if you don't do it all over, then, you know, whatever. As I say, you could use cut up credit card. I think you can use like pot noodle pots, um, although I've never tried it. I must give it a go, actually, because plastic card isn't cheap these days. Um, I'll just notice I need to put some sprue goo in there as well. There's some other sink areas there. Um, so, yeah, this this I mean, this is now I can't squeeze that drink. But that is a very, very strong cylinder. Um, I mean, you can see it flexing there, but I'm giving that a good squeeze. It's as strong that way as it is that way. Uh, and I know that that joint's not going to crack because it's all latticed in and everything. So, um, yeah, that's worth that's one worth remembering for the beginners. You know, if you build an aircraft with a long, long slender fuselage, like, say, a B-52 or or um, or a 747 or any of your sort of big airliners, particularly your, your 72nd scale VAT form stuff, you know, that doing that is a must 
uh, and it gets it all it's sort of probably trebled or even quadrupled your gluing area and it's given it some support as well so it won't it won't crack on you in the future and it makes it easier to work with because it's all flush and uh, on stage two I've noticed there's some mismatch in the plastic so I'll show you how to get around that as well so um, there we go we'll call that a day for part two and part three will be along very very shortly and in part three we will get our nozzles finished off get them um, rubbed out and painted and everything so they'll all be looking nice I'd also like to know if someone can tell me I've noticed a lot of kits people paint the inside of the nozzles red and yet I haven't seen any references that show the inside of the nozzles red so if someone could tell me why people do that I'd be interested to know or maybe I'm looking at the wrong references so um there we go guys thanks for watching and I'll see you all real soon bye bye